for our editor's sakes, would you please say your name, where we are, and what you do here, and how maybe how long you've been doing it? Yeah, I, I'm Mike Dewar. We're at Rhythm and Brews, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, I've been running shows here for about 12 years now. And before that, I was at the Sandbar down on the river, Chattanooga. Did shows down there for about 10 years. So I'm old. That's pretty much it. When was the first time you heard of or saw Driving a Crime? I had heard of them. Uh, they played a small club here in town uh, late 80s. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Russell Lineman came to me in the early 90s asking if we might have Kevin Kenny come do a, uh, an acoustic show on a Sunday in the summer at the Sandbar. And uh, I didn't know Kevin well, but we did it and ended up having three or four hundred people show up. Sunday evening. It was wonderful. And I knew Kevin was a good guy when he got paid. He walked to everybody on the staff and handed each of them a $20 bill and thanked them for working. I knew right then Kevin was a good guy. Right. Uh, and then when, that was your first uh, dr that was your first experience with Kevin. And then right. when was your first experience with the band? Uh, probably six months or a year later, driving a crime. And then we would do them. Um, uh, we would do them about once a year at the Sandbar. It was always one of the biggest nights of the year. So many people would come to me saying that driving a crowd had made memories for them, whether it was on spring break at Club La Vila or uh, in, in college listening, whatever. It somehow it, it evoked great memories for them. And so everybody always flocked to the club to come see them. And obviously it's a great rock and roll show. Uh, how many shows would you say you've booked and promoted over the years for the, for Driving and Crying, Kevin Kenny combined? Probably 30 or 40. Right. Yeah. And um, what is it about, how can they, why do you keep bringing them back? You do good business with them and... It's, we do good business. There's doing good business and then there's doing good business and it's a great show. When Kevin comes in, I mean, it's one of the best southern rock bands ever, and uh, there's no denying that. And Kevin hasn't lost a beat. He's as good now as he's ever been. And you want to see great southern rock and roll? There you go. So that's what it's all about. And then he's so willing to do the acoustic shows where you get to really explore the songs, what he's talking about, and uh, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. And the fact that they're great guys. Somebody calling for the show for tickets? Let's yeah. see what happens. Let's, see. Let's suck it up. Somebody already got it. So. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, how's tonight's show doing? This is a benefit for... What? Tell me about tonight's show and how the sales are and what you expect to happen. Uh, it's Trees for Ringgold is, is the title of it. We're going to replant Ringgold. They got wiped out. And... Um, we probably pre-sold 150. I expect to sell out 400. Um, everybody that calls wants to tell me a story about why they love driving and crying. It's the fun part of answering the phone. Right. And uh, I've had people as far away as Arizona that have moved away, heard about this, loved the Southeast, loved driving and crying, and they bought tickets with no intention of being here. They just want to help support it. So there's this love affair of the South and Kevin and Driving and Crying, and it's great, so I'm looking forward to a wonderful night. What's your favorite Driving and Crying album or song? See, I don't want to be cliche, but he's got the kind of greatest hits live thing, mm -hmm. and I've, I've given that to everybody I know because the live show is really where it's at, and mm -hmm. uh, heck, it's all good. I don't have a favorite. When he starts, I'm happy. I like the sound check. Right. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're a fan. Uh, wh why? What's the essence of why you're a fan? I think it's the essence of rock and roll. We have plenty of bands that come in here that have the label of a rock band. They seem so angry. Kevin's music sings to the South and is clean and crisp and clear. The emotion of the band, though, powers. Powers the whole thing. It, it's it just 
got to see it. You know it's good, right? Right. What about the song Scar But Smarter? What does that mean to you, Scar But Smarter? I don't know. You don't? Know? Okay, okay. Um, also, uh, let's see. Is there a biggest moment you can think of in your history with the band that you're, you were the proudest of? You, you know, it's funny. I, I told somebody today when they asked me how many shows we've done, and there's always a moment during each show where I'm somewhere in the room and I'm standing there and I know I'm watching something great. I don't know that I can remember any one in particular, but there's always that moment when you know that something great is going on. Now that I've said that, you know, maybe we won't have that moment tonight, but I really do think we will with, with, with Give Your Old rolling in, an old friend, and, and uh, the good atmosphere and the good feeling in the building already. I'm, I'm anticipating that again. Was there ever any dark moments? Is, did you ever see them uh, when they were going through some troubles? And Sure. I mean, uh, I, I remember once when Kevin was going through some struggles and our show was supposed to start at 11 and we hadn't seen Kevin yet. And uh, he rolled in about 11.15 and I quit sweating and it was a great show. But he, you know, Kevin will tell you that he went through some struggles there and, and uh, it's a little scary for us. We were sold out. And, I was ready to rock. It all worked out. Right. Um, I guess uh, one thing we're talking about in this film that I wanted to ask you is, uh, what is your definition of success? And it, and then follow that up with, is driving and crying successful? I, I think you ask any fan, they're successful. It, it can be measured in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I tend to measure the story of Kevin handing out $20 bills to the staff when he knows they're all struggling and in college. I measure it by the phone calls where someone isn't just buying a ticket. They want to tell me a story about how some song or some show moved them. Uh, the fact that he's picking up the phone and wanting to do this. Uh, the other people on the bill did the same. But it's not like my phone's ringing off the wall of people wanting to come in and do free shows and raise money. Um, Kevin and his band epitomize Southern music for me. And when I think of when you sit around a table drinking beer, what are your favorite bands, all that kind of stuff that we all do, Driving and Crying always comes up. Uh, my doorman said he can't believe he gets to work tonight. And he's so thrilled. Uh, ask any fan they'll tell you they're successful. And when they can give it away like they are tonight, they're successful. Is there anything else you want to say for the record? Just that obviously I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Kevin, number one, and all the guys in the band. And you. It's a big family. It isn't like people come and go in the band. People change. It's a family that rolls in. And, uh, you sort of know what you're getting when you come in. It feels good. Everybody's glad to see each other. It's like when Jimmy Herring walks in here every year or two. We go back to the sandbar days of the late 80s and 90s and we just hug, you know? He's done great things. We're still friends. When you guys roll in, it's like friends coming in. Well, I hear the music starting. We better let you get to work. All right, partner. Thanks. Thank you.